Hello and welcome back, and that is right, Synology has now released the DSM 7.2 Beta. And in this video, I'm not only going to show you how to install it, but also go through some of the blibs and blobs and bits and bobs that are included in that beta. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, I am not in my usual location. This is where the whole YouTube started. This is in my own home, and this is me basically utilizing some area of space here uh, while I'm doing some other bits and bobs around the house. But I wanted to make sure I got a video out on this for you guys uh, as soon as it became available there is an article as well it's already linked in the description it will go through a lot of the bits and bobs that are included in the beta as well as how to install it uh, and other things on in this video will highlight not all synologies are supported more on that later and i would say the dsm 7.2 beta is going to be a bit more granular because there are bits and bobs that aren't there right now that were highlighted in dsm uh, uh synology's own 2023 presentation at the end of 2023 uh, which aren't available yet but there's clear indications they're going to be so whether they make it in the beta in of themselves or as individual applications again more on that later is to be played out but I've got a NAS here. I've updated it. There's no difference there on the main DSM interface. Uh, again, we'll come back to the whole idea of the push notification later on. But if we go into the info center straight away, as you can see, there we are running DSM 7.2. Now, how did we get it? Nice and simple. It's linked in the description. Head over to the link in the description. It should be exactly like this on screen. Start typing in your NAS. In my case, uh, we'll go for the DS920. As soon as you select your NAS, click Submit. And then after that, on the bottom of the screen, it will give you an access to the download. No need to sign into your Synology account, which really surprised me. I really thought that would be something they would do. They did that with DSM7's initial uh, beta, that first one. And then from you, you can download the file to have it locally and then also you go to the release notes and there's lots of information we will be going through this page with a slight fine tooth comb but a bigger video on this later on the other thing worth highlighting is at the bottom of the page you've got a list of packages because once you update your NAS to DSM 7.2, a lot of individual packages need to be updated to a DSM 7.2 client version now some of them have had almost no change they're really just standard version of the file system uh, of the uh, application that has been updated to 7.2 for compliance for usage there and a number of applications are actually updated during the dsm installation indeed we've got a ds923 over here and if i go ahead and log into this system what i'll do is go ahead and update this nas just to show you and give you some idea about that installation there sorry ignore that typing error um and while it logs us in there in the back, while we go for a remote connection to that NAS, um, again, we can look at some applications. And if we scroll down, we'll find Synology Office, for example, which has had actual meaningful DSM 7.2 updates, such as that compatibility of third-party formats, uh, as already detailed there in those fixes, broken down. Now, heading back into this NAS, we'll go in, log into this NAS, come out of the saving there, no need. We go into the control panel. Once you've downloaded your .pat file from that DSM beta page, head over here, go into update and restore, then go to manual DSM update, click browse, find your installation file that you want to upload. So in my case, the 923, click OK. And now it will upload that file uh, to the NAS and it will go through. But it's worth highlighting, again, if you are running, you know, an enterprise level operation, if your NAS needs to be on and, you know, is mission critical in terms of data, do not update to DSM 7.2. This is for testing it is for trying out new applications it is not designed for mission critical data any kind of business utilization and also make sure you have backed up your nas in advance before proceeding with this i'm using disposable data on these NASs, but you very well might not be so do not up to update to dsm 7.2 if it's mission critical systems you're running and you haven't got a substantial backup in place. Another thing, you can't reverse DSM 7.2's beta installation, or at least you can't do it easily without going into putty and really mucking around with the system in a way that can also brick it and invalidate your support and warranty there. So do not update the DSM 7.2, the beta, if that applies to your skill set and your usage of the system. The last note that Synology do make a key point of highlighting is you should not update to DSM 7.2 for the beta if you are running surveillance station 
particularly to any meaningful degree, but I would say anyone utilising it, because at the moment they haven't un uh, released Surveillance Station 9 DSM 7.2's version. So if you go in, try to update, and you've already got Surveillance Station running, the system will actually halt you during the installation. So it's quite nice they've included that, rather than you updating and then getting hitting a wall later on trying to run Surveillance Station because there isn't the supported app for your system. Another thing worth bearing in mind is that some systems currently do not have a DSM 7.2 beta in place. Now, this is really peculiar in some cases because, as you can see, all, through, all four of these systems aren't supported, and these all run the Realtek RTD 1296 processor. However, there are other NASes in that family uh, or other systems that have that CPU, such as the DS420J, that actually does have a DSM update. So I'm not sure what the limitation is, and it's certainly not memory, because at least one of those systems we talked about there in that listing have at least two gig of memory. Uh, again, we're going to have a bit of slowdown as we update that DSM there. But still, nonetheless, it's not the CPU that appears to be the limitation when it comes to choosing a supported NAS with DSM support there. The last thing we'll bear in mind, and I will touch on if we go into the NAS here with DSM 7.2, the beta on it, is if we look at the package center, you can see there at the top that AQC111 driver is not supported. Now, what is that? Well, that was when we were doing some testing a few weeks ago to check the status of using unofficial up, um, uh, firmware uh, and drivers from GitHub to enable us to use 2.5 and 5G adapters. If you are running those updates, if you are running unofficial supported mods, there's a good chance these will not work. And the same goes for if you're utilizing third party applications in the community package center, because a lot of these are going to be compatible with 7.1. And therefore, there's a good chance they're not going to run. Some likely will. And as we mentioned on the channel before, DSM 7.2 um, in the tool chain uh, has been available already for third-party developers and partners to modify their apps. So some might well be working, but certainly not all. So the fact of the matter is, if you are going to run this update, just be prepared that you might have some applications not supported on this new platform. So again, if you're going to use the beta, just be aware and remember rolling back and downgrading that firmware because once you've updated it, you have updated the DOM on that NAS. So if you do this, you can't just put in some fresh drives and roll back. It will update the existing firmware manager on the system. You will make that system only DSM 7.2 beta compliant, and therefore you'll have to start getting your hands dirty with putty to roll it back. I'm really sorry to be repetitious, but too many users just jump into these betas, and then you see post upon post, Reddit posts, official forum going, I can't roll back, how do I do it? So when it comes to the changes, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, a lot of the changes are yet to arrive. The two Big ones, the ones that have been long requested, of course, were to do with the volumes, um, uh, having uh, support of uh, Worm, right one to read many on shared folders, and volume encryption. So let's take a look at that first. One of the minor points I will add that was highlighted is if you're looking at drives, uh, they have now added a drive status update within the storage manager it's very minor um, on top of that if we go into the storage area we'll go for create and we'll create ourselves a new volume like normal so we'll put this volume here on two we'll give it a, a size let's give it you know 10 uh, 10 tb why not we'll give it a name new vol click next from there we're going to run btrfs and there is our new option. I'm just going to zoom in for you there. And this gives us the option to encrypt this volume, something that a lot of you, uh, myself included, kind of assumed Synology should have done a very long time ago. So we can go ahead, we'll select to encrypt this volume here, we'll come out, next we'll come out of that. Now we have to give it a password there again, you want it to be as complex as possible. Once you're done, click enable, and now it's going to an, uh, add an encrypted key to this system. We click apply, and as you can see now, it's inviting us to download our local key. So now we've got that R key to get in 
and again lots of information there about how it's done we're going to be doing a much deeper video on this later on once we can really expand into the features one of which to do with ssds i can't really touch on that this time that i'll explain um so it will ask you to confirm you've got that key and you know you've received that key really really important because if you've cancelled that download and you've proceeded that might be problematic for you but as you can see now it's creating our encrypted volume there which again means the moving it around reacting dismounting and more you can auto mount as well is something that can now be factored into our security protocol with a system restart or if someone gets hold of the system now moving over we can talk a little bit there about the right uh right once read many functionality and those dual setting options so now if we go into create create our new shared folder actually no not folder we want to create a new shared folder we'll create our new shares we'll call this one new share worm Again, we're going to leave it there on volume one. We're not going to play with it too much. Again, I'm going to enable recycle bin for a reason that you'll see in just a moment. I'm going to click next. From there, we can choose whether we want to go ahead and encrypt it, something we've always been able to do. Um, or we can choose, as you can see, to create that right once. So that's their own naming and versioning of right once read many. So again, we click next. And as you can see, it will disable that recycle bin because that kind of flies in the face of what Write Once Read Many is. So from here, we can choose those two modes. Now, enterprise mode is when you're a high-end business and no one uh, can alter these files apart from an admin. But I've got a little bit ahead of myself there. What is Write Once Read Many? Even though the name might be very obvious to a lot of you, what it means is, is this is a file that once it's created can be read virtually indefinitely but it can't be altered or deleted either forever or for an indefinite period and the only people that can do it are authorized individuals such as system admins now in the case of enterprise only admins can alter that file the alternative is to go for compliance mode where it can't be deleted by anyone and this is a permanent record file that will exist forever and ever and ever within the system while the system still exists. Now, if we go for enterprise mode, we can choose whoever we want to enable auto lock. Now, this is something slightly new. It was barely touched on during the DSM, uh, sorry, the Synology 2023 presentation. And this is when, as you can see there on screen, uh, it, if a file is not touched for an extended period of time, it auto, auto locks that file which again is going to be very very useful either for those that are accessing the same files at once but more more usefully archive on a long time storage so if we enable an auto lock there we can set a time period of how long the auto timer will last for as well as a retention policy as well so again we'll leave that all as default and as you can see we can choose whether we want that to be an immutable untouchable permanent backup if we choose there if we go for next, we've got the usual options that we're used to seeing before with regards to enabling uh, checksums, again, to check the um, uh, integrity of that data over time. These are all options that have always existed. And then from there, we can go ahead and now we're creating um, our um, a shared folder there that's now got that right once read many support there in um, our enterprise mode once again we can say who's got access to it we can do read write access and of course with the admin account there is the true power user when it comes to changing or altering what is possible within that new right once folder as you can see we've now got that new icon there listed there on top so if we go ahead we can look at all the permissions there we can see it all listed we can go into file station there on screen find our new worm in there so let's transfer a couple of files shall we let's go into the multimedia file there let's dump some of those plex files something nothing too crazy we're just going to go with photos there copy them over so i'm looking down from the camera um we'll go for that write that in there now we're putting in there bear in mind i am an admin user while i'm doing this so that will make a bit of a difference now that's pretty much the main two things people have wanted in this now there is of course going through that change log a few other things that we've not really touched on some of which i can't show you in this system and some of which is either too enterprisey or i simply don't have the hardware one of which being the adding of new ssd group management options unfortunately i've only got two synology ssds and they're currently in a ds 1823 xs so i'm unable to show this but i'm sure someone on youtube will be covering this very very soon 
And there's a breakdown all the way through of all of the supported features. So some of them are more improvements of existing subset, subsets of features there, some of which we've already touched on as well. And again, we can scroll through, have a look at the individual options there, most of which are going to be uh, back end. There was uh, the notification system has seen a little bit of changes there in the background with the way the information is displayed there and some of the um, um, options open to individual users. The same goes for USB dismounting as well. I know we've kind of ragged on Synology a few times with regards to USB support there and largely ignoring, I'm not going to call it a meaningful update, but the fact that it isn't just admins that can eject to USB seems long overdue and something that should have been included in DSM 7.2 already. Um, but again, we will be doing a little bit more of a deep dive on this very, very soon. But those are the really the key features for a number of users there that might want to take advantage of that. So if we look at some of these files and folders we're creating here, They've been righted through, and even individual files and folders will be locked in on that right once there. And again, you can change those permissions accordingly as you see fit. But this has been uh, just a quick reminder and an update that DSM 7.2, the beta, is available. There are changes to apps, as you see, with the updates there, while we're looking at the one that we updated earlier on, the DS923, such as support of that HEVC um, application that you're going to have to go in and update manually along with a few other applications on the system uh, for DSM 7.2 compliance as well as there at the bottom highlighting the applications on your existing system that will require updates to be compliant with DSM 7.2 and do pay attention to those because then you know whether what you're doing is just going to be a big old headache and not worth the time. Also remember you can't really apply retroactively some of the things you've done so for example heading back in to uh, the shared folders if we go into that multimedia there and uh, if we go in and edit that file there we can go ahead and change some of those we can create an encrypted shared folder which is great to see but when it comes to worm support it is not available there it's only going to be available from its creation there same goes if you make your way into the storage manager and we go into that pool that we created there that new pool let's go for it and find our new volume i should say and that new volume that we've created support um we can go in go into the settings and as we can see We've got the recovery key that we can regenerate. But if we go into an existing volume, as you can see there, while I, my cat is annoying me there in the background, you can go into settings and that option just isn't there. You can't retroactively apply uh, both encryption and uh, worm support there overall. There are other changes I'm sure being dug into DSM 7.2, but I'm sure you'll find a lot of them for yourself. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Link in the description to download 7.2. And I will be updating this article with more information on DSM 7.2 as we dig a little deeper into this beta that's just been launched. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, whether you're going to update or you're going to wait for the full release, maybe a release candidate. And other than that, have yourselves a lovely week.